Okay, good morning class. So today we're looking at differential calculus. As we know, we are pressed for time. Later on, probably, if we have time, we can look at exercise 2 and 3, but I've explained where that actually fits in. And at that point, we, at the end of exercise 2 and 3, we derive the following formula, which is f prime x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay. So that formula, people, is given on the formula sheet. It is always question 1. The first question in calculus, either question 1 or question 2. If the limits question is question 1, then the application of this formula, which is uh, determining the derivative by first principles or by rules of differentiation, we use this formula here. The sum is normally worth 4, 5 or 6 marks. Okay, depending on the complexity of the sum itself. Okay, it's a definite sum that you must get in paper 1. Okay, as you know, calculus is paper 1. Alright. So we are looking at the examples 4. Um, just cut this. We are looking at the examples for exercise 4 and 5, which is on page 153. So, your heading today is uh, differentiation of functions from first principles. Okay. So, the definition of derivatives of any function if given by f prime x is the limit, as we just said now, the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Why does it approach 0 and not equal to 0? Because why this denominator will be undefined. Okay, if it's, you have d0 there, it will be undefined. So what happens is they move that, that, that two units that I explained earlier on, they move it so close to each other that it's almost approaching 0. Okay, but not exactly 0. Why? Because the denominator will be undefined. Okay, use the definition if you are asked to. Now, later on you'll see that they will just say use the derivative and calculate the derivative. But if it doesn't say by first principles, then you will use some other method. If it says first principle, you use first principle. You understand? You will also, it could also say determine um, the, the, the derivative by rules. Okay? What's that? Not by rules, by definition. So it's either um, yeah. The derivative by first principles or by definition, then you're going to do use that formula. Okay, but you will see it will always say um, by first principles. Okay, determining the derivative from first principles, use the definition to determine the derivative. We cannot determine the derivative unless h cancels out, since division by zero is undefined. Basic algebraic. Um, um, simplification is important to determine the derivative. You often need to simplify the expressions such as these below and you should practice them. So firstly we know that h of h plus x squared or x plus h squared can be written as x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay? People, often we can see that the learner still can't do this. They, they say it's squared and they say it's x squared plus h squared. People, that is not the case. Okay? We have to, either if you, if you, don't, if you don't know the rule, you write it out twice, as it did there, and you multiply it out. Okay? But um, if you know the rule, you can just square the first term, first term times second term times two, and then you square the, the last term. People, x plus h cubed, we know that's going to be x plus h times x plus h squared. We know that that expression and that's the same. So I can replace x plus h squared with x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then I multiply the story out, I get x cubed plus 3xh squared plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. There's a mistake here, no? What should that have been? 3x squared h. Just check if you call if you Textbook has that mistake there as well. Huh? Okay, they fixed it. Okay, this is an older textbook, okay? 
and then uh, importantly here, we've got 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. We're going to find that LCM first here. Not so. And what's your LCM? x into x plus h. So uh, you find an LCM and that simplifies into that. Now we're not going to memorize that because we are fairly okay in um, distribution law and distributive law and, and so things like that. Okay. Is there any question so far? Okay, so so far you're going to get 100% of the calculus, no? If it's just what we've covered thus far, no? Right. So, um, as I said, this is the examples for exercise 4 and 5, which is on page 153. So, we're looking at the work example 1. So, here we are told to consider the function f of x equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Determine f prime x from first principles. Okay. This is uh, example 1. And this is on page, sorry, 150. Okay. So where do we start? Do they ask us to determine f prime x from first principles? You're going to use that? The formula we just spoke about now, not so. So what is that formula? F dash x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over. So what is the derivative to us? The derivative is simply a gradient. You guys understand? The derivative is the gradient at which the tangent will touch the graph. You guys understand? So if they ask anybody ask you what's the derivative, it's a gradient. The general gradient basis. Okay. So people, if f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Okay? Then what is now? You see that f of x is this here. You will agree with that. But now what is f of x plus h? Then equal to. So what I did was, if I see x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. Not so. So this would now be 2 into x plus h squared minus 3 into x plus h minus what do you see now this can simplify the not so so what can this be written as 2 into your binomial squared so I square the first time what do I get x squared x times h times 2 2xh plus the last term squared now, if you can't do that, people, don't keep yourself brave. You write the story out twice, and then you multiply it out. Please come. Is it not yet today? You can come to the side. Okay, sir. Okay, so we get rid of that thing. So it's negative 3x. Minus 3h, minus 5. You all agree with that? So what do we do now? Get rid of the brackets there, which is 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h minus 5. Now I could have written that as it is here in the formula one, one time. You could have written it. However, you see the, these three steps here that you would have gone through first before you could have done anything else. So by doing it on the side here, it's just saving me some space, space. We're done of writing it over and over. You guys understand? So what would it read now? So we got the limit. As h approaches zero. So what is f of x plus h? It's simply the story here, not so. 
So it's going to be 2x squared plus 4xh squared, 4xh uh, plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h minus 5. Do you all agree that that is f of x plus h only? Correct? Mm -hmm. Take this away because of space. Minus, minus f of x. But what is f of x? So it's going to be 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Why am I putting this in brackets? Because of the negative that must be multiplied by. And this is all over. So what do I do now? We go the limit as h approaches here. People, you do not drop this limit. You drop it at the end. Once we do the substitution of zero into the sum. Okay? So get rid of this bracket here. So what do we get? Again, 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2x squared. Minus 3x, minus 3h, minus 5. Minus 2x squared plus 3x, minus 5. And this is all over? Plus 5. All over? Plus 5. Okay, now what do we do? Now we can cancel, not so. So we say the limit as h approaches 0. 2x squared minus 2x squared cancels. Not so. What else cancels? 3x with negative 3x, yes. And negative pi and pi. People, this will always be the case with f of x cancel completely in this form. So it doesn't come, uh, cancel out completely, now you made a mistake. So, okay. So what do we notice of the sums that are left? Of, sorry, of the, of the terms that are left? But 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3h. What do you notice? What the common factor of? H. Okay, so take out H as a common factor. So what do we have? Four X plus two H minus three all over. So what happens now? H's cancels. H's cancel. And wherever we see a H, we put a 0. So in other words, this would be 4x plus 2 times 0 minus 3. You all agree with that? And what is 2 times 0? Zero? 0. So that's also gone. So what do we have left? 4x minus. What do you notice? I dropped a little bit as well. Okay. So this is f prime. So you're going to ask, but now, what does that actually mean for us? Okay. So what happens is, that if I look at the expression, the, 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 this 2x squared minus 5x, uh, 2x squared, is that the equation? f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. If I must draw this graph, that's basically what it's going to look like. Let's pull a calculator up here. So 
So your, your x value is 2.5 and the other one is negative 1. We've got an, a minimum uh, x value, and x minimum of 2 is a 3 over 4. Is now your minus b over 2a in it? 3 over 4. And it turns at negative 49 over 8, which is negative 6.25. Basically, what this graph looks like. Okay. So, if you look at this line here, okay, and I say, okay, what is the. Okay, before I go there, what did we say? What is f prime x? Is your. What is this? Your general gradient. Anywhere along that curve. Okay. So if I want to find the gradient of the line at this point, at 2.5, what I do is I put 2.5 in here. Okay? And I say f prime 2.5 is going to be 4 times 2.5 minus 3. That's going to be 5 times 2 is 10 minus 3 is 7. So this gradient of the tangent that is going through here is going to be 7. Can you see that, people? What? If I choose this here on that side, what do you know about that tangent? This tangent will be, or the gradient of this tangent will be? Negative. Can you see this gradient is positive here? If I put negative 1 in here, 4 times negative 1? Negative 4 minus 3? Negative 7. Can you see it's a fairly steep gradient here? Um, in the negative direction. Can you see that, people? What if you find the gradient here? Let's say this is 5. Will this be a gradient be st steeper or more gentle? Huh? Steeper. So you put 5 in here, what do you get? 4 times 5? 20 minus 3? 17. Can you see that? The gradient will be 17. What, what would be, okay, so if I choose now this 3 over 4, let's choose 1. What would happen to this gradient in comparison to the first one I drew? Will be more gentle, not so. So if I put 1 in here, what's 4 times 1? 4 minus 3? 1. Can you see that, people? What would happen if I actually substitute the turning point or the axis of symmetry in there? What would the gradient then have been? Let's check. Put 3 over 4 in here. What's 4 times 3 over 4? 3. 3 minus 3? 0. So with a gradient of 0, that's what the line is going to Can you see that, people? So at the turning point, your gradient is zero. And remember that, no? We're going to use that as time goes on. Okay. Let's just leave this here just in case you need it. Okay, so let's look at Number two. Number two says determine f prime of three. Determine f prime of three. So what are they actually asking us then? What are they asking us then? Is to determine the gradient at three. That's basically what it's saying. Determine the gradient. What gradient? The gradient of the tangent. It's determining the gradient of the tangent at three. Okay. So it says f uh, prime 3, so it's like f dash 3 is equal to, so if I see x I put that, 3, so it's 4 times 3 minus 3. What's 4 times 3? 12. And 12 minus 3? 9. Okay, so if I to go with 3 here, eh? the 3 would have land approximately there, and if I draw the tangent, that tangent will have a gradient of? You guys understand? So number number three says what is represented by f of f dash of three. What did I say? What it is? Is the gradient gradient of the tangent to f of x at x is equal to three. 
the gradient of the tangent to the graph of f at x equal to 3. Or you can say the gradient of 9, or the, the gradient of the tangent at x equal to 3 will be 9. Okay? Let's see how they phrase it in the textbook. We are told that f prime 3 is equal to 9 gives us the gradient of the tangent to f at x is equal to 3. Okay, there's another mistake there. Yes, yes, at x equal to minus 3. What's the same in your book? Did you check the textbook? Sorry? No, no. The read there. It says f prime x is equal to 9 gives the gradient of the tangent to f at x equal to 3 or minus 3. Okay, so here's another mistake in this textbook. Okay. I think that's the older textbook. So there's a... Uh, they corrected the, the mistake there. For those of you who have the older textbook, it should have been 3. Okay. And yeah, not negative 3. Do you guys understand? Is there any confusion so far? No. Then it says... Let's go to the next question. Determine the equation of the tangent at x is equal to 3. So I was going to draw in what we're actually calculating. So we're actually going to calculate the equation of this line. And that point is, this line is touching that at this point only. Okay. It has an x value of 3. People, the equation of the tangent, what type of graph will this tangent be firstly? It will be a straight line. Not so. So if we have a straight line, what would the standard form of a straight line be? Y is equal to mx plus c. But what's the gradient of that line? What is the gradient of this line? Sorry? Not everybody at once? Sorry? That is the general gradient. 4x minus 3 is the general gradient anywhere along the curve. So the gradient of that graph is 9. You guys understand? So, this is going to be y is equal to 9x plus c. So what do I still need to calculate? C. So one of two ways to calculate c. Firstly, I need a point that's lying on this graph. Or I need a y-intercept. Not so. But if you're looking at this information here, do I know the y-intercept here? No. However, I know that this point here is going to be 3 and some y-value here. Not so. So how do you think you're going to get that y-value? And the substitute is yes. 3 is yes. into the original equation. Correct. Why into the original equation? Because that point of 3, x equal to 3, the tangent and the parabola is going through that point. Does it make sense? The point of the section. Can you see that, people? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 3 into the original function. So let's substitute 3. What was the original function? f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So substitute 3, what do we get? 2 into 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 5. Let's work that out. 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 5. The answer is 4. So what does that mean? Where does the 4 fit in? It's going to be, the point will be 3n. So now we're going to substitute the point of contact, which is 3n4 into y is equal to 9x plus c. Did you do that substitution quickly? Remembering this is an 
x and y. So I have 4 is equal to 9 times 3 plus. What's 9 times 3? 27. 4 minus 27? Negative 20? So what's my equation? Therefore, y is equal to 9x minus 20. Any confusion there? Eh? Nothing yet. Okay. So let's look at the next question. The next question says determine the average gradient between negative 2 and 3. So if I look at the graph, negative 2 is approximately here. Negative 2 and 3 is here. So they want to know the average gradient along that curve. Okay, or the slope of the graph. Okay. So check in your textbook if those are the values actually where they want the negative 2 and negative 3. Well, these are the values. You're right. So, how do we calculate the average gradient? As we normally do, it, we're going to work out the corresponding y values. Okay. So, again, what is that equation? E for x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. So, what I do is I determine the corresponding y value at x equal to minus 3. So, it's 2 into negative 2 squared. Minus 3 times negative 2 minus 5. Work that out. And you do the same for f of 3. But I think we got f of, of 3 already, no? Because that is a point we worked out here. What was this f of 3? Oh, so I don't have to do the calculation again. I know that's going to be four. So this goes minus two. Two into negative two squared. Uh, minus three times negative two. Minus five. Answer is nine. So the point of contact is, or the points of contact, is negative 2 and 9 and 3 and 4. So how do I work out my average gradient? Same as I work out gradient. Okay. The average gradient formula is simply f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now if you don't remember that formula, don't worry about it. Okay. So do the substitution, same as we do gradient, not so. So if this is B, then this should be F of B. If this is A, that will be F of A, or vice versa. If that had to be A, then this should have been the function at A. Or this should be B, that will be F of B. You guys understand? But that doesn't make a difference. As long as you're not going to say that is B and that is F of B, then, then, then you will run into issues. Okay. So what is F of B? 9 minus 4 over negative 2 minus 3. 9 minus 4 is 5 over negative 5. Which give an answer? Negative 1. Okay. You guys understand? And then the last question, question six. Determine the equation of the line passing through negative two and three. What what will the standard form of a straight line be, people? What's the standard form of a straight line? Y is equal to a mx plus. But what do we have so far of this line going through negative two and three? You have the gradient. What's the gradient? The y is equal to negative x plus c. So the gradient, of course, is negative 1. So what do I do now? Hmm? 
The substitute, the point lying on this curve. The point lying on this curve is either negative 2 and 9 or the n. So I'm going to substitute 3 and 4. And that is the one Remembering that's x and a y again. So 4 is equal to negative 3 plus c. So c is actually 7. So therefore y is equal to minus x plus Okay. Okay. Part of your homework I would suggest before you go into the exercise is to work through one of these subjects. We'll just read through it so that you. And now I'm giving you a lot at once to take in it. But okay, the best part is there's another sum. Work example two. Work example two is on page 15. Here we have to consider the function g of x equal to negative x cubed. Find the derivative of, of g of x at the point where x is equal to negative 2 using definition of derivative. People, when he says the definition of derivative, what must come to mind? Another word for definition I could have used? First principle. Can you see how they use it? Very seldom do they use by definition, but they could. Okay. So what's the formula? See if you can remember, uh, have memorized the formula as yet. Huh? F prime x, yes. But now because this is a g, what am I going to say? G prime x. If that had to be an h, what am I going to say? H prime x. If it's an m, m prime x. If it's x, x prime x. You guys understand? So g prime x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over. If you had written the formula out using f of f prime x equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, you wouldn't have to lost in it. Okay? You see how nice we are. Okay, we just want to give you marks. But she's shaking her head. She doesn't want it. No? Right? So with that in mind, people, where do we start? We say if g of x is equal to negative x cubed, then what is g of x plus h then equal to? Anybody? Negative, yes. X plus H. Yeah. We'll agree with that. Okay. So what did we say earlier on? That that is the same as saying negative into X plus H into X plus H squared. That mustn't be. It's a binomial square. So it's going to be negative into x plus h. You want x squared plus 2xh plus h cubed. Multiply that story out. I get negative into. That's x cubed. That times that is 2x squared h. That times that is x squared h. This gives me positive 3x squared h. Plus. That times that x times x squared x, um, x times h squared x h squared x, uh, h times 2 x h is going to give you 2 x h squared we add it to get 3 x h squared the last term will be h times h squared is h squared so in other words that simplifies into negative x cubed minus 3 x squared h minus 3 x h squared Minus h cubed. 
And I'm going a bit fast, but if you want to put a little step in there, just pause the video and you can do what I did for me. Okay? The learners we have is sharp since the first day back now, after the only day. Alright. It's a different group to what we had last time. Okay. People, what do we have here? Is the limit as h approaches zero. People, what is g of x plus h equal to? That's story D, which is negative x cubed minus 3x squared h minus 3x h squared minus h cubed. That is what g of x plus h is. Okay? And again, with space and take it away. Minus what is g of x? Negative x cubed. And this is all over h. So what do we get now? Can you get rid of that bracket? Not so. So it's a limit as h approaches 0. Negative x cubed minus 3x squared h minus 3x h squared minus h cubed plus x cubed all over h or x cubed over h. Now what do we do? Cancel. It cancels. So what do we notice? What do we have? What do we have left? Negative three x squared h minus three x h squared minus h cubed. What do you notice here? Common factor of h. Yes. So it's a limit as h approaches zero. H has a common factor. I'm going to leave with negative three x squared minus three x h minus h squared over. Now what? They just cancel. You see now my denominator is not having an h anymore. So what do I do? If I see an h up to that, zero. So it's going to be negative three x squared minus three x times zero times zero squared. So what's going to happen? The second term is gone and the third term is gone. So if I had to substitute the h in of zero. You guys understand? So what do we have? Equal to negative 3x. We put any problem so far with the maths, no? not with our lives. Fairly simple, no? Something like this worth six marks. Okay. But we're not done yet. It says find the derivative of g of x at the point where x is equal to negative two. So what must I do now? We substitute negative two. So what do we say? g prime of negative two is equal to negative three into negative two squared. Gives you four, which is negative four. Come on. Let's answer these questions quickly. What does g prime of negative two represent? G prime of negative two. Does mean to say the gradient? The gradient. Tangent, the equation of the tangent. Why is it called 
y is equal to mx plus c. What is the gradient at negative 2? Negative 1. So y is equal to negative 2 of x plus c. Now, if I look at that cubic function, say this is that cubic function. Okay. So that would be 0 here. Yeah? That is what that graph looks like. We're still going to draw this graph. Okay. What do you know about this gradient at negative 2? Will be a positive or negative gradient? Negative gradient. Can you see? It's fairly steep. Hence the negative 12 thing. Can you see that before? So that point of contact there is actually negative 2 and some y value. How do I get that y value? Substitute negative 2 into g of the original function. So what I say now is g of negative 2. Remember g of x graph was? Negative x cubed. Okay? So g of negative 2 is negative negative 2 cubed, which is 8. So that point is actually negative 2 and 8. So we're going to substitute negative 2 and 8 into y is equal to negative 12x plus. Okay? Remembering this is x and a 1. So 8 is equal to negative 12 times negative 2 plus c. That is 24. Negative 24 will give you an answer, negative 16. Hence that low value there, y to c. So therefore, y is equal to negative 12x minus 16. Okay, you guys understand? So the, the next question is to determine the average gradient and then determine the, the equation of the line passing through the average gradient. Okay, so that the next uh, question, the 4 and 5, I will do in tomorrow's lesson. Okay? But for homework, I would like you guys to do uh, exercise 4. Okay? There are six sums. Please complete them all. Journalists every day, people. Good morning, class. Okay, good morning class. So uh, today we're looking at differential calculus. We're carrying on from uh, yesterday's lesson. We have done of the four examples, we have done one and a half. Not so. Alright, so let's carry on. We've also indicated that from exercise four, we had issues. Not so. Okay, so we'll try and sort it out here. So this was in work example one. We are in work example two now. No? So yesterday we got until the point where we answered the first question which says um, find the derivative of g of x at the point where x equal to negative two using definition. We say definition is the same as first principle. Okay? So we apply the first principle using the formula. Since it's g of x, we see g prime x equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. This formula is on your formula sheet. And please write it down when you apply the, this uh, first principle. So also do not forget to write the limit here. If you leave the limit out, of course you're going to lose that mark there as well. Okay? So that works out to be negative 2x, uh, negative 3x squared, and then we substitute that negative 2. Then what did we say? What does that actually mean? That means to say that the gradient of the tangent to the graph of g of x at negative 2 is negative 12. Then I went on to draw you what the, the cubic function would look like. And we see that, that this tangent here is actually... Um, the, 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 the gradient of this tangent is what is calculated here. Then, uh, question 3 says determine the equation of this tangent. So we know the gradient. We the equation of the tangent in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So the gradient is negative 12. So y is equal to negative 12 x plus c. So now we need that point of contact. And how did we get that point, point of contact? I substituted negative 2 into the equation of the cubic function. And I got an answer of um, 8. Okay? 
and then I substitute negative 2 and 8 into this equation. And I got the equation of the tangent to be negative 12x minus 16. Okay. That's the next question. Number 4 says, determine the average gradient between negative 2 and 2. So in other words, negative 2 is there and positive 2 is approximately here. So they want the average gradient of that curve there. Okay, or if I draw a line through that thing, what is the gradient of this line? In other words, you guys understand? Let's just pull the, the reference down to thing. That thing yeah. So determine the average gradient between. Now remember, what is the equation of this function? g of x is equal to negative x cubed. So what we do is we need to calculate the, the corresponding y values. Not so, because how do you calculate average gradient? But we calculate gradient. Not so, so I need two coordinates or two points. So I go g of negative 2 is equal to negative minus 2. Okay, I didn't need to do this because I knew that was 8. Okay? In g of 2, it's going to give you negative 2 cubed. And uh, that's going to give you negative 8. So this coordinate is negative 2 and 8 and 2 and negative. So for the average gradient is the same as gradient, not so. But for those of you who remember the formula, is f of b minus, is actually in this case, g of b minus g of a over b minus a. If you had written f of b minus f of a over b minus a, you wouldn't have lost anything. Okay. So again, if this is a, then that is going to be f of a. So it's going to be, if that is b, and that's f of b. So it's going to be 8 minus minus 8 over negative 2 minus 2. Which gives me 16 over negative 4, which is negative 4. Which also makes sense, people, because what do you notice here? The graph is actually, the graph is decreasing. Not so between those two points. And it's decreasing at the rate of 8 per unit. And negative 4 per unit, or 4 per unit. Okay. Then the next question says, determine the equation of the line passing through. Determine the equation of the line passing through negative 2 and 2. So again, the line that they're referring to is that line going through like that. Not so. Through those two points. Let's just draw it a meter. This is what that graph looks like. It's negative 2, and it's positive 2. Again. So the graph will go through like that. Okay. But what do we need to calculate two points? And uh, the graph, or a straight line graph, I need two points, that suffice. Which I do have with you. Not so. So, in this case, I have my gradient already. And what's my gradient? Negative 4. So and I now say the equation is y is equal to mx plus c, but negative 4, so y is equal to negative 4x plus c. So how do I calculate c? We substitute one of these two points. So I'm going to substitute 2 n, negative 8, or you could have substituted negative 2 n. Give you the same solution. Remembering that's a x and a 1. So negative 8 is equal to negative 4 times 2 plus c. There's negative 8, not so. Bring negative 8 over becomes positive 8. So it gives you a c value of 0. So therefore, y is equal to negative 4x plus 0. Y is equal to negative 4x. If we refer that now back to this diagram, what do you notice here? What's the value of the y intercept on this graph? 0 anyway. Can you see that, people? It's cutting through the origin anyway. Okay, that wasn't a nice. That's why I read through it. But you guys understand? Hmm? Right. Is there any confusion, people? No. Okay. Let's look at example three. Example three says consider the function g of x is equal to five. Determine g prime x from first principle. Where do we stop? Where do we stop? Okay, we first change that. This is exercise example three, of course. And it's on page 150. So 151. Okay. So it says, 
Consider the function g of x equal to 5. Determine g prime x now personally. When we start, find the formula. What's the formula? g, of g prime x is equal to the limit h approaches 0. Uh, g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. Is that okay? If g of x is 5, what is g of x plus h? Is there, is there an x here? No. So there's no place for us to substitute x plus 5 and x plus uh, h. Can you see that, people? So if g of x is 5, then what is g of x plus h? Also 5. What is g of 2? Five. What's G of A as eight? Five. What's G of infinity? Five. G of minus infinity plus one? Five. Because if I should draw this graph, that is Y is equal to five graph. That's a graph we're actually drawing. So anywhere along this curve, you got the corresponding Y value of five. Can you see that, people? But now, what is the gradient of this graph if it's parallel to your x-axis? Zero. What's the gradient of the graph if it's parallel to the y-axis? Undefined. Make a note of that. It looks like you guys forgot that today. If, if you got a line parallel to your x-axis, whatever the line might be, say y is equal to b, then the gradient of this graph is zero. There's no gradient. However, if the graph is parallel to your y-axis, then the gradient of this graph is undefined. Not infinity, undefined. Okay, this is parallel to your y, parallel to your x. Okay. Now with that in mind, people, what can we say? What is g of x plus h? Sorry? Five is. Is five minus g of x? Five. All over. So what's 5 minus 5? Zero. zero. Nice. You guys are saying some promise. Huh? So you got 0 over h. People, 0 over h is what? Zero. So that would be the limit as h approaches 0 of 0, which is? Zero. Okay. What, well, who can remember what does g prime of x actually mean? What does this mean? What does the derivative mean? To general? Gradient. And remember when I drew this, y is equal to, to 5 graph here. Yeah. y is equal to 5. What did you notice about this gradient of this graph anyway? What was the gradient of this graph? You know, which confirms this here. Okay. Any other confusion there? Okay. Then this is determined g dash of 7. g dash of negative 7. And what is g dash of... g dash of x is 0. So what is g dash of negative 7? 0. So the gradient at negative 7 is 0. This is a fairly simple question. Let's go to the next one. What? is represented by g prime of negative 7. That is basically your gradient of the graph at negative 7 is, is what? 0 is. You see what the textbook says? The gradient of the tangent to g is given by m is equal to g dash of 7 is equal to 0. The gradient of the tangent 
to G is given by okay? Gradient. of the tangent to G and gradient of the tangent to G at G is equal to negative 7 is 0 ok, that's basically what this is <coughs> let's go to question 4 State the equation of the tangent at x is equal to negative 7. Okay? State the equation of the tangent. So if we look at this here, we know that the gradient of this graph is 0. So y is equal to mx plus c. But what's your m value? 0. So in other words, y is equal to c. So if we substitute the, uh, negative 7 into g of x, we get the corresponding y value. Okay? The equation of uh, the graph was uh, g of x is equal to 5. So what is the g of negative 7? Five. So this coordinate is negative 7 and 5. Remembering that's an x and a y. There's no x here. So what's your y value? 5. Therefore, y is equal to. Okay. Any confusion there? No confusion. Okay. <coughs> Example 4. In example 4, we are told, consider the function. Okay, example 4 is on page 152. Consider the function f of x is equal to 2 over x. Determine f prime x from first principle. Where do we start? Formula. What's the formula? If, if prime x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over. Now if f of x is 2 over x, then what is f of x plus h? 2 over You all understand it. Is there any confusion? No. Wherever we just saw an x, we put, replace it with an x plus h. That's it. Okay. So let's go. If prime x equals the limit as h approaches 0, what is f of x plus h? 2 over x plus h. Minus, what is f of x? 2 over x. And this is all over H. So what do you think we're going to do now? I'll see. And what's your LC inside this bracket? What? X into X plus H. So what must this be multiplied by? X. And this? X. And this? X plus H. There? So in other words, I have now 2 into X minus 2 into X plus H. And that's naturally over 1, not so. So what are we going to do here? Change to multiplication, tumble and time. You all agree with that? So what does this become? Multiplied by? Whatever. Whatever. 
So what do I do now? Let this bracket here not so. So we have the limit. This h approaches zero. What's two times x? Two x minus two x minus two h all over x into x plus h. Now that okay, multiply by one over. I'm gonna just put the h at the bottom of it if you want. Okay. So what do I do now? You like terms now, not so. You like terms. I don't do like terms. What happens is two x cancels two x. Not so. So what am I left with? The limit, h approaches 0 of negative 2h over xh into x plus h. Now what? H is cancelled. You see the reason why I didn't multiply this out here now? You always need that for last, okay? That cancels, which now gives me negative 2 in the limit. As h approaches 0 of negative 2 over x into x plus h. But what, what can we do now with the 0? It's substituted now. Can you see I couldn't substitute in the previous step? Why? So that h would have been 0 there. Does it make sense? So if I replace h with 0, then what do I have now? Negative 2 over x times x, which is? Okay. Let's do it again. No, no, it's not true. But you guys understand? The sum is worth six marks in the count. Okay? So it's one of those uh, four that we've done before. Those are the, the, the questions that is asked. Okay? Okay, so what does this what does this uh, if prime x what does this actually mean? It is the general gradient of f of x anywhere along the curve. Okay, there's a general gradient of f of x anywhere along the curve. So if you want the gradient at a specific point, then what do we do? We substitute that x value to get the gradient at that point. This will give you an idea again. I know some of you don't want to see this graphs. But this is basically what it means. Okay, so you've got what? This is the what type of graph is this? Yes, hyperbola graph. So that is what this graph looks like. Okay, why is it in those quadrants? Because it's positive. Okay. Now if you look at this, if I draw it a tangent here, okay, would this gradient be shallow, um, gentle, or steep? Here we go, yeah? More gentle and more gentle and so on. So let's say we know that this point here is the square root of 2, which is 1, comma something. So let's go with 8, which means to say it's going to be very low. Not so. So I put 8 in here into this gradient. And will that gradient be positive or negative? Of this little tangent, gradient be positive or negative? Negative. Why do you know? Decreasing line to the left. So I said I'm going to choose 8. Why did I choose 8? So a big number. So 8 squared is 64. And there's going to be negative 2 over 64, which is negative 1 over 32. Can you see how gentle that gradient is? Or low that gradient is? So what happens is, if we let's choose a gradient here, let's go with, that means to say that we said it's 1 comma something, so let's say 1, what's going to happen, it's going to be 1 squared, and negative 2 over 1 is negative 2, can you see how steep the gradient is now, let's go with 1 over 8, 
which is closer to the x-axis here, which means to say the gradient is going to be even steeper. Can you see that, people, in the negative? So what do we say? 1 over 8. Let's pull that calculator up here. Sorry. So uh, it's going to get negative 2 over, um, over brackets, 1 over 8. It must be squared, so that 64 is 1, 20, something. Negative 1, 20. And you see how steep that gradient is in the negative. And as I move closer and closer to your, your x-axis, or your y-axis, sorry, where your x is equal to 0, the gradient will become steeper and steeper and steeper. You guys understand? Likewise, I can take the gradient here as well, it will act the same, it will act the same. You guys see that? So again, what is f prime x? It's the general gradient of f anywhere along that curve. Okay. If you want the gradient at a specific point, you substitute that point. Okay. Let's go with number two. Number two says determine f prime of four. So what are they actually doing here? They're working out the gradient at four. Okay. So let's go. So it's an f prime of 4, so wherever I see x, I put a 4. So negative 2 over 4 squared, which is 16. Negative 2 over 16 is negative 1 over 8. What does f prime 4 mean? What does f prime 4 represent? The gradient of the tangent at x equal to 4. Correct? Again, in the textbook, in their words, it says um, f prime 4, f dash 4, gives us the gradient of the tangent to f at x equal to 4 as m is equal to negative 1 over 8. Okay. Number 4. Determine the equation of the tangent at x equal to 4. Okay, so again, we just draw this roughly here. So again, that is what the graph looks like. The equation of the tangent, the line that we're going to draw, is a line going through like this, something like that. Remember the tangent is going to touch at one point only. And that is 4 and some y value. We know the gradient of this graph is negative 1 over 8. Can you see it's shallow here? It's low. It's a low gradient, it's a gentle gradient. Okay. So what's the equation of the of a, of a gradient? What's the equation of the tangent? But be in the form of y equals mx plus c. What's my gradient? Negative 8. So y is equal to negative 1 over 8x plus c. So how do I calculate, so calculate c? Substitute the point that's lying on this curve. Not so. Do we have that point? No, we must work that out. Now, how do we work that out? We substitute 4 into the original function. Why into the original function? Because that's a graph in black. At this point, the two graphs are equal to each other. It's the point of the section. So what is g of x? The equation of g of x is 2 over x. So g of 4 is going to be 2 over 4, which is r. So this point of contact is 4 and okay you guys understand so what do I do now substitute 4 and a half remembering that's x and a y so half is equal to negative 1 over 8 times 4 plus What we do we now say okay that works out to be negative half not so the negative half over becomes positive half half plus half is one so my equation is y is equal to negative one over eight x plus
Is there any confusion there? Easy, no? Hmm? Yes. Number five, there should be a number six as well. In number five, we are told, determine the average gradient between x equal to negative one and x equal to four. I'm going to pull this graph in black down. It'll give you an idea of what we actually calculated. Determine the average gradient between x equal to negative 1, which is there, and x is equal to 4, which is here. In other words, if I draw a line going through there, they wanted the, the gradient of this line. Okay, you guys understand? Normally, they would give it on the same part of the curve. But okay, that is how they, they gave it to us in this case. Okay, because we know that. The equation of g of x, g of x is equal to one, uh, 2 over x. We know that this point is what? 4 and? Oh. This negative 1, we need to calculate the corresponding one. Not so. Why do I need that? So that I can calculate the average gradient. I need two points to calculate the average gradient. So what do I do is, I say g of negative 1. It's going to be 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. So what's the two coordinates? 4 and a half and negative 1 and negative 2. So how do you work out average gradient? We're using the formula f of b minus f of a over b minus a. We don't remember that formula, what we use? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2. So it's going to be minus 2 minus half over minus 1 minus. Now it gives us uh, 5, 5, and, uh, 5 over 2 in the negative and 5. The answer is half. Let's just check. It's negative 2 minus half over negative 5. So what is this? This is actually the gradient if we had to draw that line through those two points. Okay? And then the last question is, determine the equation of the line which passes through negative 1 and 4. Determine the equation of that line. But what we know about that equation already? Okay, it's a, it's a line, so what's the standard form of a straight line? Y is equal to mx plus e. What do we have at this point? The gradient of that line, which is r of x plus c. How do we calculate c? We substitute one of the two points that we have here. So I'm going to go with negative 1 and negative 2. We substitute negative 1 and Remembering that's x and a? Y. So negative 2 is equal to a half times negative 1 plus c. So that is negative half, not so. Take it over, becomes positive half. So it's negative 1 and a half is your c value. So therefore y is equal to a half x minus 1 and a half or 3 over 2. Any confusion there, people? Hmm? Yeah, right. So with, with regards to exercise 4, is your problem now sorted? Number 6. Number 6. It says use the definition to find the derivative. Number 5. Or oh, you say 6 minus 1. Okay. Use your first principles to find the derivative of g of x. Okay, this is from... Exercise 4, number 5, on page 153. 
We've got two of x is equal to negative five x squared plus two x minus three at x is equal to negative one. This is yeah. Use first principles. So when we stop, it says use first principles. Formula. What's the formula? F prime x. So the g prime x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. So, if g of x is negative 5 x squared plus 2 x minus 3, what is g of x plus h? Negative 5 into x plus h squared plus 2 into x plus h minus You guys understand? So, if I do that substitution here, it's simply the limit as h m the limit as h approaches zero. What is g of x plus h? So I'm going to just do the first step here. That will be minus five into x squared plus two x h plus h squared um, plus two x plus two h minus three. It gives you negative five x squared minus ten x h minus five h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 5. Are you okay with that? I'm just going to write this in here now, as in the place of g of x plus h. So it's minus 5x squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3. That is g of x plus h. No? So, you take it out. Minus, what is g of x? At the place in brackets. Negative 5x squared plus 2x minus 3. And all over. So now I get rid of the brackets. So it's the limit. As h approaches 0. Of 5x squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3 plus 5x squared minus 2x plus 3 and this is all over there's a limit as h approaches 0 so 5x squared my cancel 5x squared negative 2x cancel negative 2x and 3 cancel 3 people the g of x here in this format will always cancel completely if it doesn't cancel completely no you made a mistake so so what are we left with? Negative 10xh minus 5x squared plus 2h. But what do you notice about the three terms that are left? Common factor of h. In this format, that is the case always. Although negative is also common, I'm not going to take it out. Because if you're going to take it out, you must multiply it back in. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with us yet. So you take negative 10x minus 5h plus 2. All over. Now what do we do? Cancel the H's. And wherever we see a H now we can put a zero. That's gone. So therefore, G prime X is equal to negative 10 X plus two. People like, what does this mean? This is your general gradient anywhere along the curve. But what do they want? They want the gradient at Negative 1. Can you see that, people? So, therefore, g dash of negative 1 is equal to negative 10 times negative 1 plus 2, which is 20. Now, uh, and um, 10 plus 2 is 12. So, what does that mean? That means to say that the gradient of the tangent to g at negative 1 is 12. You guys understand? What if the question was? Determine the tangent. Okay, it wasn't asked. I'm just going to do it. Just to um, you know, answer this question here. Determine the tangent to the curve at x equal to negative. And what do I do from here? 
What do I have? What, what is the equation of the tangent in the standard form? Y is equal to mx plus c. What do we have thus far? The gradient. So y is equal to 12x plus c. So what must I still calculate? C. What do I need to calculate c? A point on the curve. How do we generate that point? Substitute to negative 1 into g of x. Can you see that, people? So in the original, so g of negative 1 equals negative 5 into negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. People, this wasn't asked, no? Okay, I'm just uh, showing you if they'd asked you for the equation of the tangent. So that's going to give you negative 5. Minus 2 is negative. 7, negative 10. Is that correct? Let's check again. Yes, negative 10. So that means you say the point of contact. Negative 1 and negative 10. So what do I do now? You substitute that. So you substitute negative 1 and negative 10 into y is equal to 12 x plus. Remembering that's an x and a y. So what do we have? Negative 10 is equal to 12 times negative 1 plus c. What's 12 times negative 1? Bring it over becomes positive 12. So 2 is equal to c. Therefore y is equal to 12x plus. People, the sum like this is worth 4 marks. Okay, once you have calculated the gradient and so on. Four so it's worth understanding how to do this thing. Yeah. Okay, we're knowing how to do it. Thank you, just put it on the table. Thank you. Pink and nuts. Right? People, any issues there? Eh? Any problems? So with that, you should be able to do exercise. Fine. Was there any other problems with exercise 4? And that brings us to the end of this video. The full lesson can be found in the description box below.